Welcome to Summoner's Rift. It's the NACL All-Star Best of One Show Match. The Elder Lizard Conference, fittingly on the red side. The Ancient Golem Conference, fittingly on the blue side. And myself, Optimus Tama Malthus X, going to be bringing you this cast. And, well, we'll see how many times we accidentally call it Ancient, uh, Ancient Lizard and Elder Golem, because I'm down for at least three tonight. Uh, I'm probably good for at least seven. But uh, in either case... <laughs> This is, I'll be perfectly honest, I've been so busy with real life stuff, I think this is the first game I've cast in the preseason 4 patch. So I'm pretty excited to actually be spectator side on this one and see uh, how all this ends up going. <laughs> Apparently the banter going on in chat, Cop has access to Curse Academy's team speak, so he's trying to eavesdrop on the enemy team to figure out where they're going and what they're doing. But I had to second that one, Malthus. There hasn't been a lot of competitive action on the recent patches. We've seen potentially just a couple of NACL match. Uh, not, oh, I'm sorry, not us. We haven't been on a break. But the NESL matches, we've seen maybe some European matches that were going on in like the Black Monster Cup and things like that. But not a lot of recent patch matches. So I'm really excited to see here. Well, I gotta point out, the thing I'm most excited to see here is that there's only been one Relic Shield picked up in this game. <laughs> Indeed, yeah, the double target <laughs> nonsense did get hotfixed. They, they decided that that was not exactly healthy for uh, for the game. But uh, I'm pretty intrigued to see Quas going with the No Trinket start. So he's saying, you know what, nope, I'm only going to be buying Season 3 items. I'm only going to be, uh, I'm not going to take advantage of any of this preseason 4 nonsense. The old gods are the best. Well, I mean, he does line a sudden cloth armor and five health potions, so our dreams of solo lane tag still there. We do have, uh, looks like Shifter Unleashed and just starting the standard Yoren's Blade and one health potion at this point in time. So we might not be seeing any double dual lane shenanigans, but we are seeing right now is the Ancient Golem Conference patiently, patiently oh. waiting in this bottom lane brush. They want to try to get the jump on Cop and Daydreaming, maybe a little bit of payback for when oh. Cop is eavesdropping in their, uh, their team speak chat, but they're still waiting around in this brush. And if they wait just a couple more seconds, oh, they, they might have, want to get that jump done. They have to know, right? They have to know something's wrong. No one's shown up in a lane yet. Daydreaming, no! Oh, Daydreaming face takes the brush and he has the trick. He didn't use the ward. Cup goes down for first blood as Fabi, the gatekeeper, closes the doors to team speak and closes the doors on Fox Lane. Oh, that was so rough. Daydream is the one to face check the brush, but it's going to be Cop who ends up paying his life. Loses both summoners and goes down for that as well. Uh, only two ignites spin over here for the side of the uh, of the old ancient goal. Stop, Tom. Tom hey, help me. <laughs> Can't do it. A little bit of hit and run in the mid lane as Mega Zero shows some love shifters way, and we are going to have our lane matchup settling down. It is an interesting support with Bane as the AD carry in the bottom lane for the side of the ancient. Going on MIA under tower, he does have a jump on Kha'Zix, so he will be able to get away with what little life he still has left. Top lane matchup from Will see Tarek going up against Riven as Fabi gets super aggressive on Daydreaming. One more auto attack, a flash throw from Fabi, picks up a kill, flash throw from Nico trying to get the save down on Fabi, but from behind, Shifter comes in from mid lane. It's a double kill on the bot, Nico with double bust, he's gonna go down. Redemption for Cop, and good Cop takes the kill away on bottom lane, 8-3 for one trade. Shifter is still showing us. You know what? I don't necessarily have to be playing an actual AP carry in order to be one of the best roamers in the North American scene. He's going to be able to show up just in time and make all sorts of nasty plays happen. So, you know, some retribution there for Kopp. Always nice. And uh, looks like we've got a lively game on our hands here, Tom. Uh, we definitely do. And I don't necessarily know how much we're actually going to get to see of analysis of this one because these guys are just literally going for each other's throats. And MIA complaining in chat that there was no MIA called for mid lane, so they need to be reporting people, and these guys just having a lot of fun with this one, Malthus. But as we can see, now that a little bit of the action has subsided for now, pretty standard lane matchups going down, at least the standard 1-1-2 one, one, lane matchup down in this one. And Megazero's Riven is having a very difficult time getting the upper hand on this very beefy, very armored, very fabulous character boss, but he's support from Nikmu, but Boss gonna take a lot of this beating. He's gonna have to flash away from this one. Heals himself up. Is it gonna be enough to get him out of that one? No, it's not. Nikmu's gonna come in and seal the deal. Very, very nice to play there by Nikmu, recognizing the aggression here. But now Nintendo Dex is gonna try to respond. Won't be able to keep the Nikmu locked down long enough as Safeguard is uh, quite the spell. Yeah, it definitely is. Gets him out of a sticky situation, and unfortunately, as the Grungle. I don't think that Gragas Jungle is gonna have the tools pre level 6 to try to lock down. He has some power farming that jungle. Currently 3 v 2 yes, and level 5. Compared to Niku, who's gone for the standard ball, I'm going to gank some... ...himself kill, but only 10 CS on this side. So, 
Down the bottom lane, Cops got himself the uh, double buffs. That's gonna be pretty terrifying. Is your, your, I mean, Sivir is a very, very low range AD carry, uh, but so is Vayne. So when you're in a situation where as Vayne, in order to come up in CS, there's potential for Daydreaming to initiate on you, and there's also potential for Cop to just step up, auto attack you, get the reset with the Ricochet, and then apply that red buff, and just get the extra burn damage that comes from that. It's it's a pretty difficult lane to actually find space in, but Fabi's doing a great job. Here's the initiation from Daydreaming. Oh man, Danger goes in, MIA goes down, his shifter roams from mid lane once again. Takes a tower shot for his troubles, a gatekeeper underneath there. One more tower shot actually, as he still had some aggro. Shifter gets down extremely low, but Daydream is gonna dive down. No fear for his own health bar. Nick Luke pops in from the jungle. He's gonna pick up another kill onto Daydream, and it's a turnaround right there, a one for one. Just so much aggression coming out here, dive after dive. It's the only Jax was hanging out in the mid lane trying to hold this down as Nintendo Dex is uh, again trying to hold the lane because Shifter's just spent his entire time roaming down to the bottom lane. He's been rewarded. I mean, he's up three kills right now. He's got a pretty excessive amount of gold. But, uh, you know, this has been a pretty interesting game. People diving under the towers and other people showing up just in time to make plays happen because of it. You see Nick Wu is going to be the beneficiary there. He shows up just in time to grab him a kill. Only Jax was in the mid lane. He's got him up to 39 CS. And up at the top lane, you know, we talked about this being kind of a, I don't want to say like the highlight matchup, but this is definitely going to be one of the more fun ones. It's going to be the solo lane Tarek trying to take down Best Rim in NA. And so far, not having a terribly bad time of it. Uh, you can say that, you know, this is the jungle pressure from Nick Wu really has made the difference between these two sides, as that, more than anything else, is what has alleviated the pressure, given Mega Zero the time to get the levels and also pick up a little bit of a CS lead. Now you see he's in a situation where he's level 6, uh, Quas is only level 5, Mega Zero, Playing dangerously into the tower, chasing him down but not actually attacking him. Just following him around the tower while getting as much CS as he can. Here comes MIA. Jackson is coming in from the side as well. There's the stun. There's the dive. Jackson is going to pick up the kill as Quas goes down without ceremony under his own tower. Oh man, poor Quas. He might be a tanky, armor driven bruiser in the top lane, but can't really quell the aggression from three members of the ancient golem side of things. This tower taking a lot of a beating right here. Looks like it is going to wind up going down. And Nintendo on Jungle Gragas, he can only kind of just stand there and pour it out for his fallen tower in that top lane. Now, Nick was going to come in towards the mid lane here. It's a 2v1 situation with a kind of lane swapping, kind of Romy style coming up from Daydream and support Leona right here, as he has two AD carriers which he can support. One in the bottom side of the map, or technically now going up towards the base, and one in the middle of the map here, but they're going to wind up getting jumped on by the roaming hit squad coming in from top lane. Daydream is going to get ignited. The sun went down from Jack Smith beforehand. Flash forward from Jack Smith will secure the kill, and Daydream winds up falling down after his troubles, but the culling comes out from Shifter in mid lane. Just a little bit of a distraction as the Ancient Golem Conference look for Tower number two. So Shifter able to come in from the side, poach down the bear. Tibber's gonna be gone with that one. The calling, one of the last ticks of it, was able to pick up that kill. And uh, you see Shifter's just kind of sticking around in the area and being as obnoxious as possible. Nick Wu is level six, does have the ult available, so Shifter needs to be careful that he doesn't get kicked back into the side. Uh, at least then with a lot more mobility here, because he's got the warding trick available. He also has a ward in the inventory. All right, and let's take a, a quick look at the items right here because I cut out for half a second and all of a sudden I see three Doran's blades two long swords from Megas here. I guess he's really trying to fix Ribbon's broken blade with this item build. Whereas Tarek, maybe the armor just got a little bit of irritating against his very fine skin. And he's gone for a more of a cloth armor centric build as he's picked up three for himself. So, I mean, Quas is definitely going to utilize the armor extremely well. 143 armor right now. His passive is currently hitting for, well, 43 extra damage. I mean, this makes a lot of sense as Nick Wu finds himself caught out. Nintendo Dex goes too aggressive. Oh man, Cop and Daydreaming though are going to be there to save the day. They pick up a kill on Nikui here. Kill credit goes over to Cop. Now he's got a red buff slowing down complexity's MIA. He's going to get locked up by Leona, but in comes Mega Zero. Flash over the wall after Cop. He's going to wind up sealing the deal on a kill from there. Now MIA, he's the one that turns it around, flashing after Daydreaming. Gets the slowdown from those missiles. Winds up getting the Q proc down on the Daydreaming. Jack Smith shows up. No stun going down quite yet. There it is. Jungle Gragas throws a barrel over the wall, but MIA is going to jump out of the way. Jack Smith has to deal with a roaming shifter now. Now as Mega Zero comes in and the Elder Lizard guys are running towards the wrong base. Daydreaming goes back in. Quas comes in from top. It's Stunlock on Jacksonus and he goes down. Now Mega Zero in a 1v4. Can he be a Mega Hero? Gets the stun down on the Nintendo. In comes Nick Wu for some support. He picks up a kill onto Nintendo X. Jungle for Jungle Trade there. MIA is still here. The calling comes out from Shifter. He's trying to kite back against Nick Wu. But in the background, Quas flashes after MIA and he goes down. Nick Wu aggroes the dragon to take down Shifter. It's a shutdown spree for him. Mega Zero and Quas are ducking out 1v1 here. It's damage against Tank. This fight isn't going to end anytime soon unless Nick Wu shows up.
up. He comes in, gets some execute damage on Quas, and Mega Zero cleans up the fight. While Fabi, after all of that goes down, he gets himself a tower. All right, so Quas ends up flashing a tower uh, to kill a dead champion as the double golems were able to pick up that kill for him uh, before he ever got anything done there. MIA wasn't able to quite affect his escape there. But more importantly than all that, Fabi spent that entire fight. I, I'm sitting here watching the dragon. I'm waiting to see if there's going to be an engagement. The entire time they're fighting, here comes Jax. He's going to try to start it up. The well, dragon goes down in the background, and Niku at the same time, Fabi, now joining the fray, is able to pick up a kill on Daydreaming. So right now, the Elder Lizard Conference All-Stars, they're down a dragon, they're down four kills, and they're missing two of their towers on the map against a very heavy AD composition. But let's not forget, they got a Tarek who's going to be an armor billy. They got a lot of extra damage coming out from these double AD compositions, but do they have the defenses to tank up against this very, very bruiser-heavy side from the Ancient Golem Conference. I mean, we're gonna have to figure that one out as the game goes on. Uh, that's why they're prioritizing Fabi's farm so much, because he is going to be the tank killer here. Uh, his, you know, his true damage is gonna be a huge part of what's gonna get them through this game. And the entire time that fight was going on, that three minute engagement in their jungle, Fabi spent the entire time just hanging out in the bottom lane farming up. Now he's got a Blade of the Rune King on. Now he's trying to take advantage of that farm. Well, Nintendo calls for A-Ramp and everybody groups up in the mid lane here. The calling comes out. Is Fabi going to go down? Cop secures the kill with a boomerang blade. Could it be two towers and a Mega Zero, actually? Now MIA comes in from the side, but he's got no resets available. Nikwu picks up a kill, but is it going to be enough for his team to come back into this one? Piercing Light snags the kills. It goes through a minion and picks up the kill onto MIA. It's two kills for Shifter, a tower, and an additional kill for the Elder Lizard Conference as they storm back with this double AD aggression. Just so much power coming out from Shifter right now. He's already picked himself up five kills early on. Uh, there are five kills on the Nick Wu as well. And Nick Wu is, you know, he's using those to kind of get himself a mix of stats. He's going with the, uh, the Elder Lizard. And actually, he's going to try to get on a Daydreaming. Oh, man. Nick Wu kicks Daydreaming back. But into who? It's only Jaximus, which I guess kind of makes sense. He's able to pick up a kill on Daydreaming, but at the expense of Nick Wu's life. Five, three, and three now on that Lee Sin. And a six, one, and four Shifter walk away from that fight. Turns out the Spirit of the Ancient Golem isn't enough to allow him to just dive into the middle of the entire enemy team and actually have any expectation to come back out. Uh, he does, you know, put that kill onto only Jacksmith. He does get Daydreaming off the map as well. But he right now is, is, a, is a significantly larger presence with his five kills as opposed to, at the time, the four deaths that Daydreaming was rocking. So, you know, it looks like they will be able to make something happen because of it. They do grab themselves up a tower and they open up even more space for Fabi to continue farming. Oh, a flash and a Tibbers from Jacksmith. MIA comes in and picks up the kill. No evolved wings means no Resets for him quite yet. Mega Zero baits out the Leona ultimate. Not gonna wind up landing on anyone. Jaxus gets a stun down on Shifter, but he's in danger's alley right here. Jaxus is gonna get taken down by Shifter, but Daydreaming trades his life to Fab. He winds up popping the final hour, trying to get away. Am I off to the side? He winds up popping the invisibility, jumps down, picks up a kill on Cop. Mega Zero does a flip for Confect right there. There's a stun against the wall coming out as a contempt on the Shifter. Nikwu goes in, tries to get something back. The Cullen comes out, but Lucian goes down. Nikwu picks up a kill for himself and and I'd have to say about this, this game is quite literally the definition of a seesaw right now. Fabi has used the cleanse, so Quas will, be have, will have the opportunity to get the stun down the next time he has the cooldown up. They're trying to poke him down and see if they can take this tower down before the rest of the Elder Lizard side respawn and make their way back up, but they won't have the time to do so. They do show up now. Daydream has got those boots of mobility uh, in addition to that target. Uh, so he's going to do what he can to just get in range, get those initiation down, pop the ult. Will he be able to find? No, couldn't find Nipu in time. No, he could not. And things, for the first time in the past 13 minutes, Malthus, I think us as casters have a moment to breathe, because things have sort of settled down. Three towers from the Ancient Golem Conference, two towers from the Elder Lizard Conference. The kill score currently reflects 17 to 12, with about a 3,000 gold advantage going in the favor of our blue team with the blue golem buff. Shifter's gonna wind up picking up an Ancient Golem buff for himself, so he's going to have a lot of, well, a lot of mono regeneration and not as much cooldown reduction as he used to be able to get from that one. 10% rather than 20% as we move into the pre-season 4 patch of things. And as we look down the items, well, despite all the all-out brawls and the extremely low CS counts at this point in time, there's some pretty key items being completed. Blade of the Ring King on both main AD carries, while there's a Bloodthirster picked up for a 7-2 and 4 Lucian against a DFG coming out from Annie and... Fabi, well, he's in the wrong neighborhood, and his gate gets closed on him and his own tribe rush as Cop and Daydream and work together to pick up that kill. That was, uh, that was kind of rough. That, you know, that's, that's arguably one of the scariest things about Leona's. Nick Wu tries to make this happen, could not get the initiation down. The war jump was, you know, very, very nicely executed, but Nintendo Dex with that body slam, able to keep himself safe. 
<laughs> well, there's another fight breaking out this time on the Elder Lizard side of the map. Nick Wu and MIA going into a fight right here, but Milash away from MIA leaves Nick Wu to his own devices against three members of the Elder Lizard Conference. Timberstone comes out, doesn't quite stun Quas, who does get the dazzle down on Nick Wu. Long range Zenith Blade does connect, and it looks like Daydreaming gets the kill onto Nick Wu there, despite his team trying to save him. That was really clutch from Daydreamin. I mean, Nikwu was very, very close to making it his way to the Dragon Wall, being able to flash himself back out over. He also had support coming in. He would have been able to jump back out. Daydreamin has MIA revealed on the ward. Well, it's a support battle, the most exciting thing in League of Legends, but Fabian Jackson is going to show up and ruin this one. Only Jackson has picked up the kill as MIA barely escapes with his life from that duel. So sad. The calling! Oh, Fabi gets hit by the Culling. Shifter winds up trying to take him down. One more auto attack. No, it's the red buff that seals the deal. Shifter proves that he's the better AD carry or marksman in this game as he picks up the kill on the Fabi. But in comes Mega Zero. One, two, three broken wings. Flash over the wall, but a flash away from Shifter. A couple of shots over the wall. Mega Zero finds himself at half health for his troubles, but he's going to keep chasing down. Winds up popping the quick little wind slash there. And a barrel knocks him and Jaxxus into the fight. Nipu comes in as well, but Shifter picks up a kill on Andy at the same time. Cop picks up a kill on the Mega Zero, and that's going to be a three for nothing for all the troubles of the Ancient Golem Conference. You know, okay, how many games have we seen Cop go deathless? Like throughout the duration of the game? Am I eight? Red buff? Oh. Fine. Okay, I, I, it's, a, but, it's a four for zero now. <laughs> like, how, how many times have we seen that, right? He, he generally is very conservative with his positioning. He takes his time, uh, and he just doesn't go down pretty much at any point in the game. This game, they started off killing him, and I think they just made him angry, because now we're fighting him <laughs> flashing into the front lines with his Sivir. Well, I mean, he is on Sivir when he pops the on the hunt. It's kind of the signal to go, go, go. So between him and Daydreaming, their initiation is to run at the enemy team. And so far, so good. Cop, he's got two additional deaths after that first blood. But like you said, he's contributed to 14 of the 18 kills that the Elder Lizard All-Stars have picked up this time. They also wind up going for an inhibitor straight down that mid lane after eradicating four members of the enemy team for nothing. So even though the score looks pretty even in gold, one tower in favor of Ancient Golem Conference, and the kills all evened up, it's the Elder Lizard team who have a slight advantage with that, me that super minion spawning in the mid lane. But that's going to be it. I mean, that's the only advantage they have. The gold is dead even right now. I mean, I guess you could say that the, the Ancient Golem Conference team is also up a tower, so they have a little bit more map control from that. Uh, but realistically, I think having the Super Creeps coming in is going to be a lot more of an advantage from that than that one extra tower. So right now, we're here at the 17 and a half minute mark, almost 18 minute mark. This game is just about dead even. Yeah, pretty much locked down the middle, but right here we'll see what the objective call is going to be. Ancient Golem Conference, they got a dragon a little bit earlier on in this one, and it looks like it's going to be an uncontested second one for them, as Mega Zero is going to seal the deal on that one. Everybody from the Elder Lizard All-Stars was caught shopping in that circumstance here. We'll have to see if anything transpires after that dragon positioning goes to the Ancient Golem side. Just a quick kick over the wall from Niku onto Daydreaming. That's pretty much going to be it. It looks like the side of the Elder, Li Elder Lizard Conference, they're saying, who cares about objectives? We're just going to push back into your base. Daydreaming chasing after Nick, who winds up locking up the tank. A shifter comes in as well. A little Arden Blaze is going to give him some vision, but Fabi comes off the backside. Quick flash away from Daydream, and Nick, who has the Sonic Wave, Resonating Strike, and knocks Daydreaming back into his own team. Nick, who gets down extremely low. Fabi fighting on the side. Will pick up a kill onto Daydream. At the same time, Jackson is eradicating Shifter for a shutdown straight. In the middle, it's absolute chaos. His cop finally goes down, but he takes one with him. It's a triple kill for Cop, but it's four kills on the side of the Ancient Golem Conference. They do clean this one up. We saw there was so much emphasis from uh, Quas and from Daydreaming on trying to isolate Fabi and actually pick up the kill, but Quas could never really get in range to get a lot of damage down. He was able to just get the stun, and then he tried to engage forward and recognize, you know what, I can't continue in on this one. Daydreaming was already way out of position, and Fabi, you know, this is what we were talking about, where, you know what, no matter how much armor you buy, the true damage from Vayne is always going to be strong. He's already got so much attack speed from the Berserker's Greaves, the Zeal, and the uh, and the Blade of the Ruin King. So right now, if Fabi has an opportunity to just stand and just wail on either Daydream or Quas, all that armor that they built for themselves, it, it'll help, especially the Frozen Heart debuff on attack speed, but it's not going to be enough to keep them alive for long. Well, one thing that has been keeping them alive when they do group up has been that explosive cast that completely, well, mess up where the side of the Ancient Golem Conference has been. But the Elder Lizard All-Stars, Nintendo's kind of going split push all Gragas. He has the highest CS in the game, but this time around he's grouped up with the team around Baron. Nikola gets down extremely low. There's the explosive cast to shove the rest of the team away. Cop picks up a kill on the Nikola, and now the Ancient Golem All-Stars, they gotta turn tail and run. Jaxmus is blinking into the red. Fabi barely has any HP left to speak for himself, and the calling comes out! 
Pick with the kill on the Jackson Miss 0 to 100 in the decibels of my boys, as well as the damage coming out. Shifter picks up a double kill right there. Riven's gonna wind up falling, and the Elder Lizard Conference All Stars, they are shoving down onto Nexus Towers right now. It's just the duo lane from the Ancient Golem guys. Is it going to be enough to defend against five members strong from the Elder Lizard Conference? The stun comes out on MIA, and suddenly it's only a 2v5. The Nexus is taking damage, Nikmu is taking damage. Are they gonna go for a Fountain Diver? not. Daydreaming wants to go for it. The rest of the team wants to end the game. Daydreaming gets down so low. Timmers picks up the kill. Fabi on the cop. Cop ends the game and it's the Elder Lizard All-Stars that kick up the win in the NACL All-Star Summoner's Rift Showdown.